What's going on, everybody? I wanted to talk a little bit about calories on a ketogenic diet. There's a lot of confusion, I think, and a lot of back and forth on whether or not you should count calories, not count calories, what is counting calories, what calories are you counting, you get the point. It's very confusing stuff. Um, I think in order to understand why people argue about counting calories, you got to understand what the whole calorie in versus calorie out theory is all about. Uh, because it is actually rooted in some science. And it's the laws of thermodynamics. And I'm not smart enough to memorize it, so I'm going to read to you what the first law of thermodynamics is. And the first law of thermodynamics is the law that actually applies to the human body. Allegedly. So, the first law of thermodynamics states, When energy passes as work, as heat, or with matter into or out from a system, the system's internal energy changes in accord with the laws of conservation of energy. Equivalently, perpetual motion machines of the first kind, machines that produce work without the input of energy, are impossible. So, there you have it, laws of thermodynamics. Go out and lose weight now, people. You see, it's, it's a little tricky because they're taking a physics law and applying it to the human body. So, we're talking about perpetual machines and I don't know what a perpetual machine is, but I'm pretty sure I'm not a perpetual machine. So this is where people get mad about calories in versus calories out because it is based in a somewhat flawed system. But maybe that's not to say the entire system is wrong, but there is other pieces at play. And as many people on a ketogenic diet will tell you, insulin is one of those big key key pieces. And so you can be following the laws of thermodynamics, but you can be constantly, you know, uh, aggravating your insulin production and you're not really going to lose weight at the same pace as somebody who's suppressing insulin production. So there is outside factors that come into play with the laws of thermodynamics, which is why a lot of keto practitioners just throw it out the window. I don't know if that's necessarily the best practice. And the reason why is because while it's true that a lot of hormonal things happen in the body that are going to accelerate or decelerate weight loss, assuming you're not suffering from something insane, like a real thyroid, not like, hey, I'm fat because I have a thyroid, but like a real thyroid condition diagnosed by a real doctor, if you're not suffering from something that extreme, there is some, and I don't like to call it that because it is pretty much stupid to, to apply to the human body, but there is some laws of thermodynamics that are going to apply to us. And I know I, I just got a lot of keto people mad already, um, but the reason I wanted to make this video is because I hear people all the time say that on a ketogenic diet, you can eat whatever you want, as long as it's not carbs. That is true, but can you eat however much you want? And that's where I think it can become dangerous. You start telling people who are, are new to a diet and they hear about all these phenomenal results and then they start to think like, well, shit, I can, I can eat 6,000 calories, 7,000 calories. Oh, this guy over here, he made a video where he did a 10,000 calorie eat. And yeah, he didn't, he didn't lose a lot of weight, but he didn't gain any weight. I don't, I don't buy into any of that, to be honest with you. Like the ketogenic diet is, I think, awesome for a couple different reasons. One, you know, it suppresses uh, insulin production, which is really good for you. I also don't believe that uh, glucose is good for the body. I've, I've talked about it many times. There's books out there such as Grain Brain and really good books that link um, heavy carb product, uh, consumption to uh, brain disorders. So I'm not a fan of carbohydrates. But, and this is a big but, the ketogenic diet has some benefits for accelerated weight loss, the muscle sparing effect, the fact that your body's not breaking down your own muscle for proteins, you know, it's, it's, it's good for that. But the ketogenic diet is not, it's not a miracle pill. It can feel like a miracle for people who, like myself, who've lost 150 pounds, but it's not a, a miracle diet where you can still continue to eat vast amounts of food. I think the people out there that are eating, you know, five, 10,000 calories, Maybe they don't really eat like that, for one. People like YouTube is, it's, it's you know, and not everybody's authentic, okay? You can cut calories and then get the body you want and then post a video saying, oh, yeah, eat 10,000 calories. 
that's one and I'm sad to say it does happen you know look at bodybuilders a lot of people that 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 do ketogenic diet are bodybuilders and they follow that routine and then you know it's like a bodybuilder not acknowledging their own steroids it's it's kind of the same thing it's perpetuating an image that you're selling the second thing i think you fall into and this is kind of still dangerous but um it's not meant to be so by the person saying it and that is people that are athletes or have just better metabolisms or different things could be going on and look at michael phelps for instance michael phelps eats 10,000 calories a day of pizza and ice cream and cookies and, and junk and look at him he's, he's won in olympics if you went and ate 10,000 calories a day of pizza and cookies and ice cream you would not look like michael phelps you would probably look like jabba the hut so well, you need to understand that is like some people their activity levels are higher i know there's a there's a keto person who's also like a I don't know what they call him, natural fitness model. He's in incredible shape and he does videos all the time and he claims that, you know, calories in, calories out is a lie, that you can eat as many calories as you want. And he did some like 30 day where he ate 10,000 calories. And a lot of keto people said, awesome, you know, I can do that too. But you don't know what he's doing in his personal life. Like, look, if you look at somebody who has a body like that, they're probably not sitting on the couch watching Game of Thrones, binge watching it. You know what I mean? They're, they're probably being very active, so they're burning calories. Um, so I wanted to address that. Another thing I wanted to address is, and this actually has a term, it's called lazy keto. These are people who, they don't have to count calories because they're having results. And I'll be 100% honest with you, I was lazy keto for over a year. I never counted calories. And that's why I really started to, to question the law of thermodynamics more so than I do now. I thought it was complete bullshit back then, just to be 100% honest. Uh, now I kind of see there is there is something to calorie consumption, even if your calories are coming in the forms of healthy fats. And the reason I say that is when I started this diet, I was somewhere in the region of like when I stopped weighing myself, I was 390. So I probably had passed 400. And now I'm in the, about 264. You know, and when I was almost or over 400 pounds, I didn't count calories because my calorie consumption to maintain that weight was way higher than what I was eating. And so, and this is a common thread, and this is why I mentioned this is you hear people say, oh, one of the benefits of a ketogenic diet is you feel fuller faster and, you know, you just don't feel hungry. So you don't eat, you fast a lot. Well, if this wasn't a ketogenic diet, you'd call that calorie restriction. You know, the fact that we cut calories by our own choice, it's that's our own choice. But we're still eating less calories than what the body needs to maintain. And that's why I say the law of thermodynamics may not be complete bullshit is because of that. Uh, a lot of people that are losing weight on a ketogenic diet, if you looked at what they recommend the calorie consumption be and what the calorie consumption actually is, it's going to be much less. Um, I know a lot of people like that. In fact, I know somebody that just started a ketogenic diet, lost eight pounds in about 10 days. But one of the things he's been doing is fasting a lot naturally. And so you got to think like, yeah, ketogenic diet is probably to contribute to that. You're shedding some glucose, especially in the beginning. You're, you know, your body's not producing insulin, so you're burning fat at a higher rate. That's all great. But you cannot deny the fact that you're also cutting calories. And Really, honestly, one of the big reasons I wanted to make this video is specifically for women because it's a little unfair, but men get away with not counting calories at a much higher rate than women. A lot of the women who stall on a ketogenic diet, it's because they're consuming too many calories. They, they cut back and then they lose. And so it's not fair, but it, it is what it is. I mean, if you look at somebody who, like myself, was very overweight. They lose a lot of weight. If you're still maintaining eating at the same level, the weight loss is going to slow. And so for me, I think I was eating probably somewhere in the region of like 2,800 calories when I started, 27. I never really counted calories, to be honest with you. So I don't 100% know. I can only imagine um, what it was. And I'm, I'm assuming it was somewhere in that region. And I lost a lot of weight. And then the weight loss slowed. And then, you know, I cut calories a little bit just because like I, I was just, well, I'm going to start fasting not counting calories at all, but I'm fasting, you know what I mean? And I lose weight again. And I can say, oh, it's because I'm fasting, but also I'm consuming less calories. And then, so now I, I do exercises, I do, I do some fasting and I lose weight again. 
slower rate than what I lost weight at before, but that's to be expected because I'm I'm closer to my ideal weight. I'm probably within 30, 40 pounds of my ideal weight because of my height. And so I just wanted to 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 contribute to the conversation because I feel like it can be it can be dangerous for some people. And then they start to think the diet is failing and they start to think ketogenic diet is not what it's hyped up to be. And that's typically what you see a lot. You see people either come in with the mentality of being able to eat however much they want and they don't lose weight. Or you see people who lost weight for a while and then they say, you know what, the diet just stops working. Well, that doesn't really make sense. I mean, it's not like we're, we're wrecking our metabolism or we're wrecking, if anything, we're improving all of our hormonal balances and improving all of our body's function. So it doesn't make sense that the diet would just stop working. Maybe you never adjusted your calorie intake. And whether you want to call it calorie cutting or not, you can call it fasting, you can call it naturally being full. It doesn't really matter what you call it. It's, it tends to be the same general action. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. Um, I mean, you guys, I'm sure, will let me know if you don't agree, and I'm sure a lot of you will not agree because it's, it, this conversation divides keto uh, a lot. But I think it is worth noting. Again, do I agree 100% with the laws of thermodynamics? I don't believe that the laws of thermodynamics should apply to the human body. I think we need to come up with a better system because I don't believe calorie counting on a ketogenic diet is the same as calorie counting um, on a, like a low car, a low fat, high carb diet. It's not the same thing because you're having hormones in the human body that are being stimulated by what you eat. And that's why I don't think calorie versus calorie is a good concept either because basically calorie versus calorie says, hey, anything that is uh, digestible fiber is two, two, I think two, two calories per gram. Anything that's um, carbohydrate is four, four calories for, per gram and protein is I think like eight or, or fat is eight. It's something like that. Look, look it up people. I'm, I'm, I don't remember, but it doesn't equate each other. Like you say that that's fine. You're at least separating per gram what calories values are. And that's something to note also is on a ketogenic diet, people will say, well, how can you overeat? You know, it's very easy to overeat. Have you ever looked at how much calories are in almonds? For instance, you can eat easily eat like a thousand calories and a cup of almonds. It's very easy to overeat and if people aren't paying attention and they think they give themselves the permission to eat whatever they want, then it is very easy to overeat on a ketogenic diet. It's very, very easy. But again, you know, not supporting laws of thermodynamics, don't agree with it. I think we need a better system that actually says, hey, calories from this food is better than calories from that food because in this system of calories in, calories out, a cupcake is equal to you know, MCT oil, two tablespoons of MCT oil. The function in the body of one cupcake versus two tablespoons of MCT oil, it is not the same function. It doesn't do the same thing to the body. It doesn't, I don't need to go in detail. You guys get it. Cupcakes, insulin, protein, yeah, I don't know. So that's, that's where I'm at on that. I just wanted to make this video and um, put it out there, my two cents for what it's worth. It is also worth noting, people, I usually like to cite references. There is no references that say on a ketogenic diet you can eat however many calories you want. Most of the, all of the source material, and anybody that knows my videos or, or reads the articles on the website, they know that I only do government source stuff. I don't do Billy Bob's, uh, nothing against Billy Bob, but I don't do just any Joe Schmo's uh, findings because that's testimonial. I have a lot of testimonial stuff. I've been doing this diet for over a year and a half and I've lost a tremendous amount of weight, but I don't like to take what applies to me and apply to everyone. I like to try to look for either patterns or actual research is the best because it's been studied. And there's not a lot of that, unfortunately. The studies that have been done on a ketogenic diet are what they call extremely low carb diets or whatever you want to call it. It's the same diet. Um, they do show that people lose more weight on a ketogenic diet than on a regular diet, but all of these diets have matched calories, and that's something to keep in mind. Every study that I've ever cited that shows that a ketogenic diet is more superior for muscle retention during weight loss, for, for accelerated fat loss as part of weight loss, all of these diets have the two parties following the same amount of calories. They don't have uh, a low, a high carb, low fat diet are doing, you know, 2000 calories, and then a keto guy doing 4,000, 5,000, just 
it's not the way it works. They match it apples to apples. So apples to apples, a ketogenic diet is more superior when it comes to weight loss and muscle retention. So 15 minutes on a short video. That's it, people. I hope this helped. I ramble a lot. I apologize. Try not to cuss quite as much because you guys do not like when I cuss, apparently. But I hope this helped. Uh, again, it's not everything is not cut and dry. Everybody's body is different. And so one thing I would like to say is look at yourself and your situation and go from there. So for me, lazy keto worked for, like I said, over a year. But it did not work for, for me now. Like I, I cannot consume that many calories. I, I won't lose weight. Interesting thing though, I will not gain weight either. Um, I have not gained any weight, any fluctuations since I started a ketogenic diet. And there's been days where I know I consumed a lot of calories. I go to Korean barbecue a lot. All you can eat Korean barbecue, I love that shit. I don't gain weight, but I won't lose weight either. And so if you're in a maintaining level, I think ketogenic diet is going to be hugely helpful to maintain weight. You're not going to gain weight as easily. If you are actively still trying to lose weight and you're losing weight, doing a lazy keto diet, keep doing a lazy keto diet. If the weight loss slows down, that's when you have to start to look at what's going on. And it could be a lot of things. It could be that you lost so much weight that your body's now in kind of a shutdown metabolism mode and you gotta let it, you gotta go through that. It happened to me, you gotta go through that. You gotta let the metabolism kind of recovery and then you'll start to lose weight again. Or you gotta say, hey, look, I used to be 300 pounds and now I'm 180 pounds and I'm not losing weight anymore but I'm eating the same amounts of food. And so that's when you have to start to consider the fact that like, we like to call it, like I said, we like to call it start fasting. Right? Really the truth is start start doing some calorie reduction. And that's exactly what it is. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of hate comments down below. That's okay. I didn't, doesn't bother me people, very thick skin. Thank you for watching, appreciate it. Love you guys, goodbye. encore video everybody so i forgot to make a point on the video i just did and so you get a little bonus at the end it's like a marvel movie let me give you a little something extra this is probably the biggest point too that keto dieters claim when they claim that calories don't matter and that is that calories of fat can't be stored that it's almost like you just piss out all the nutrients right all the fat whatever it is your body just wastes it right that's the claim that if you eat excessive amounts of fat, excessive calories of fat, your body will just dispel what it doesn't use. Two things are wrong with this concept. And this is crazy too because it makes me question it. I've seen doctors say this. But all the research I've done show two things and both pertain to losing weight on a ketogenic diet. And one is there is no such thing as just pissing out extra minerals and nutrients and stuff. On, on average, and they, they can measure this in your urine, you don't expel more than say 4% fat. So where's all the fat going that you're overeating? If, it, if it's not being stored, what's happening with it? You're not expelling it. You're not just peeing and shitting out uh, the excessive amounts of fat that you eat. Maybe if you're eating MCT oil, different story, people. Um, the second point that I wanted to make is the whole point of running on ketones is to attack your body's fat stores, right? Your, your body's fat stores is it's a refrigerator. You know, you're just carrying around a backpack of nutrients all the time. Some of our backpacks are bigger than others, but your body can consume the calories. And I've I've said in a past video how many calories on average we have. It's a it's a crazy number. Like if if people are burning glucose, it's like ten thousand some shit like that uh, or more. On average, you have th hundreds of thousands of of uh, calories of fat that your body can convert into ketones. Here's the problem about not regulating the amount of fat you eat. If you have a cup of water and you're, you're going to drink that cup of water, right? And when that cup of water is empty, you're going to get another cup of water and you're going to drink it, right? Makes sense. Now, what if I installed a fresh waterfall in your living room that you could just stand under and drink with your mouth open like a beast? Would you drink that cup of water? Maybe you fancy people would. Most of us would just go stick our face under the fresh waterfall and you never 
consume the water in your cup. I don't know if that's a good analogy or not, but it makes sense to me. The point is, is if you have a continuous amount of fat coming in, your body is going to convert the fat you're eating to ketones, and it's not going to go through the trouble of converting your fat cells to ketones because it doesn't need to, for one. It has enough ketones running around in the blood because you're eating all this fat all the time. Your body doesn't ever have to attack the fat store. So keep that in mind as well. I don't want to do 17 minutes just on this. I think you guys get the point. Um, that's it. Goodbye, goodbye now. For real this time, people. Goodbye.